flight using the instruments while you're looking outside is called composite flight. However, when you lose your outside references, you must fly using only instruments. And this is known as instrument flight. This can occur if you're in the clouds, over sea, at night, or in low visibility. When we're in instrument flight, we're flying using a method known as control and performance. In this, we're controlling our pitch and power in order to produce a desired aircraft performance. It's important to understand how the instruments fit into this, so we'll have a look at those next. There are three ways you can classify your instruments based on their use. You have control instruments, performance instruments, and navigation instruments. Your control instruments include things like your attitude indicator and the power indicators such as your tachometer or boost. Here I've included a couple of pictures to show these instruments. Your performance instruments include airspeed, altimeter, VSI, heading indicator and turn coordinator. Depending on the instrument maneuver you're flying, these instruments are either primary or supporting during your instrument scan. A primary instrument is one you're going to check the most often and a supporting instrument is one you're going to check occasionally just to verify the primary is correct. If you lose or lack the primary instrument, then this may limit what maneuvers you can do, and you'll understand why by the end of the lesson. The last kinds of instruments we use are navigation instruments. These allow you to see your position relative to navigation aids such as an ILS, ADF, NDB, VOR, etc. And these let you locate your position on a map. Here's an example of the control and performance instruments in the Spitfire. Here we can see the performance instruments in yellow and the control in purple. Now in order to fly by instruments correctly, we need to understand how to actually scan through them depending on what maneuver we're doing. So that's what we're going to look at now. For the scan technique, we want to make sure that the attitude indicator is going to be our focus, as it's the critical instrument because it's the only one that shows bank and pitch at the same time. So anytime you reference another instrument, you should always go back to the attitude indicator. Going back and forth like this is known as the radial scan. At some point though, your scan may break down and you may lose your altitude heading or airspeed. This is due to an instrument scan error. You may not be scanning a particular instrument when you need to, you might be staring at an instrument for too long, or you could be relying too much on a single instrument. If you notice this is happening, revert to a regular scan and this will help you fix these errors and help regain control of your aircraft. There's four basic maneuvers in instrument flight. You can do constant airspeed climbs and descents, straight and level flight, level turns, and constant rate climbs and descents. With practice, you can combine your climbs and descents with a turn. Going back to the control and performance method, we want to use the acronym ETSA. You want to establish the pitch and power for the maneuver, trim the airplane as needed, then you can scan your performance instruments to check you're getting the performance you want, and then you make adjustments to your control instruments as needed to get the performance you need. Here we're starting off in composite flight, but now we're going to begin a climb with a constant airspeed and transition to the instrument flight. So to do this, our primary pitch instrument is going to be the airspeed indicator, and that's what we're going to adjust our pitch to maintain. Then, our primary bank indicator is going to be the directional gyro, this way we'll know if we're banked and starting to turn. So we establish our pitch and power, increasing the power a bit, going back to the attitude indicator, and then begin pitching the nodes up for a climb. Once our pitch is relatively stable, we can take the focus off the attitude indicator and start our scan. So as we're going through our scan, looking at our airspeed indicator and DG primarily, we're making the adjustments to our pitch and bank based on the mental picture we're creating by looking at these instruments. So if we wanted to maintain a climb of 260 miles per hour, looking at the airspeed, we need to pitch up a little bit more to reduce that speed. And we maintain our bank to keep ourselves heading north. Going back to airspeed, verifying it's good. So our pitch is good at this point, so we can hold it. We're going to want to level off at that 3,000 feet. So we'll need to include the altimeter and VSI into our scan. As we get closer to our altitude, we're going to begin the level off with 10% of the vertical speed. So here we'll level off with 150 feet left to go. Once you're there, back to the control instruments, we start leveling the airplane off and reducing our power. Doing this will allow you to level off at your altitude smoothly. So now that we're at our desired heading and altitude, our primary and support instruments will change to maintain straight and level flight. When you're straight and level, your primary pitch instrument is going to be your altimeter, 
and your primary bank instrument is going to be your directional gyro. So while you're scanning, if you see any changes in your altitude or heading, you need to make small adjustments in your pitch and bank in order to bring the airplane back to where it needs to be. So here we've gotten a little bit low, so we begin pitching up a little bit to bring the altimeter back. It's a small adjustment, and we check it again, we can see we're coming back to where we want to be at 3000. So we'll bring the plane back to level pitch, and we're maintaining our heading in altitude again. Next we'll look at the second maneuver, which is how to do a level turn. In this, your goal is going to be to be able to maintain your altitude while turning to a desired heading. So in this, your primary pitch instrument will be the altimeter, and your primary bank instrument will be the turn coordinator, because this will tell you that you're turning, as well as telling you how fast you're turning. So making the transition into the turn, we focus on the attitude indicator, and put our bank in up to max of 30 degrees, in order to prevent the gyroscope getting thrown off. Then we can also add a little bit of back pressure in order to maintain the altitude because of lift we lose in the bank. Then we start our scan. We'll be checking our altimeter and our turn coordinator through the attitude indicator. We make any pitch and bank adjustments as necessary. We're going to want to roll off on a heading of west, which is 270. So we have a quick check, about another 30 degrees to go. You're going to begin your roll out within about half of the bank angle. In this case, it's going to be 15 degrees. So we begin our rollout by focusing on the attitude indicator, bringing the airplane back to level. Then we transition back to our straight and level flight scan, which is going to be the altimeter and the DG. So now we're going to do another turn, but we're going to combine it with a climb. So we're moving out of straight and level flight and making the transition into a turn. So we begin our focus on the attitude indicator and get in around that 30 degrees angle of bank. And then we change our scan for that. So we're checking your altimeter and the turn coordinator. Making an adjustments in pitch and bank, seeing our heading. So while we're maintaining the level turn, we're going to throw in a climb. So this is going to require a power increase as well as the focus on the attitude indicator in the transition. So looking over, we'll increase the power back to the attitude indicator and increase in the pitch to initiate the climb. Now because you're combining the turn and the climb, it's going to be your increased workload for you, so your scan is going to need to be a little bit faster. So you're adjusting the pitch to maintain whatever vertical rate or airspeed you want, and the bank to maintain that turn. What we want to do, we're going to level off at 4,000 feet on a heading of south. So it looks like our climb rate is about 1,500 to 1,000 feet a minute, so we'll be going to level off within about 100 feet. As we get ready to make that transition, we're going to reduce some power to help slow down our climb rate. Checking the altimeter, making another power reduction, looking at our heading, start making the transition. So we'll level the airplane off, bring the bank to level, and then we're on our heading. Now we're back to our regular straight and level scan, checking the altimeter and the DG. The last maneuver to look at is going to be involving constant rate. We're going to make a descent. In this case, the primary pitch will be a BSI and the primary bank will be the DG. So we're transitioning from straight and level, we're going to make a power reduction. We're going to focus on the attitude indicator, push the nose over to begin the descent. Verify with the BSI and then continue to scan. So we're trying to adjust our pitch to maintain that 2000 foot a minute and the bank to keep ourselves in the heading of west. You can always make a quick check of the airspeed on your way down to make sure you're not going too fast. But your primary is always going to be your VSI and your DG. On the way down, I'm going to continue this descent instead of leveling it off. I'm going to take away the black overlay. So continue the instrument scan and use your peripheral vision to see if you can spot when the outside begins coming into view. So once you start seeing those references, bring your head back outside the airplane and begin flying visually again in composite flight. I hope this tutorial on basic instrument flight has helped you out. Let me know if you like it with a like button or a comment. Don't forget as always to be a subscriber using that bell icon. This way you can see the new videos as they're released.